Let's bring in the pumpkins because it's time to turn them into jack-o'-lanterns. We cannot pass up this old family tradition. We'll help you make it more fun and level up the creativity and a little challenge if you need it with some pumpkin carving advice. Director of Festival Transylvania at Mill Creek Gardens, Chad, joins me today on the show. Okay, it's a messy thing, jack-o'-lanterns. Now, I will tell you, as the mom of two, I, I tend to, to kind of veer away mm -hmm. from the pumpkins because I know who's going to be cleaning it up. So convince me, why, why are we convinced, why are we set on these jack-o'-lanterns? I'm in the Halloween business, not because I enjoy the occult necessarily, more because I enjoy creativity, I enjoy imagination and crafting in fact. And I think that pumpkin carving fills all those boxes. And besides that, don't you just think the smell of pumpkin carving and then having the candle inside is yes. a once a year phenomenon. It is, there's something about the tradition. And honestly, if you do have those older kids, it's that bonding experience, young and old, but it tends to be a little bit more fun when they're older. This is a great activity for those nanas who wanna bring in their adult children. Mm -hmm. This is great. So I, I hear this is very, this comes from your family, long running. Mm -hmm. Tell me how you got into this. What's your experience? Yeah, ever since I was a, a young child, our family has enjoyed making a big deal of pumpkin mm -hmm. carving. And we, we gather the extended family together. We set up all the pumpkins and it's just a big pumpkin carving party. And over the years, the tools have improved, our skills have improved, and now it becomes more and more competitive and we always are vying for that, that top notch pumpkin carving. I am looking at these pumpkins that you have carved. Carved. I'm feeling a little intimidated. Oh. I'm gonna be honest, I'm feeling a little intimidated. This goes, this is kind of a far cry from my just simple jack-o'-lantern faces. Yeah. We, I did tell you, we are pretty competitive in my family. So can you give me a winning edge? What are, some, yeah. what are the tips we need to know so that we, we can be to this level of pumpkin carving? Yeah, well first I wanna make it clear, I'm not a great drawer nor a fantastic artist. I am shocked by looking yeah. at those pictures. I'm gonna give you some tips. Um, I do enjoy creating my own designs and coming up with a pattern that, that kind of jumps but um, I'm gonna give you some tips that'll help anybody. Yeah, I see some different colors here. How yeah. are we choosing our, what, yeah. is there a difference? How are we choosing our pumpkin? Yeah, pumpkin selection, that's a good place to start. I, uh, you'll notice kind of a dark orange pumpkin yeah. and it has its benefits. A dark orange pumpkin is a little easier to carve intricate designs oh. and I feel like once it's carved, it will last a little bit longer. Okay. That the carving won't decay quite so quickly. Good to know. The lighter orange? My preference is kind of a yellowish orange like okay. this okay. because when you put a light inside, the whole pumpkin glows a little bit. Oh. Oh, so it's a little more translucent. Yeah, it's okay. a little translucent. And plus I'm going to demonstrate here in a minute um, an effect to, to scrape off the skin. Okay. And you probably saw in some of the photos that that's an, an element that I like to include. And that's a better effect okay. with a lighter colored pumpkin. Let's start with that de-seeding process. I think the one I dread the most. I don't love the feeling of those in my hands, those, what do you call them, pumpkin guts. Right. I don't love that. Is there, is, do you have a solution for that? I didn't know if I was allowed to use the word pumpkin guts I on TV. I gave you full permission. I so, gave it. It's, we're here. It's okay, me. good. You can blame it on me. Yeah. Yes. Okay. So, yeah, that's something I can help you get over. Okay. We can do this. Let's do it. Okay. First of all, put on vinyl gloves. Okay. Even this morning when I carved out and de-gutted this one, yeah. I put on the vinyl gloves. My fingernails don't have guts inside mm -hmm. them. This is interesting to me. I'm seeing that you cut this kind yeah. of in a different way than I, maybe your standard yeah. triangle method. Why did you cut it that way? Yeah, I'll show you. Um, if I could demonstrate yes. on this pumpkin. Yeah, absolutely. This is a little tip that I like to use. So suppose we want to, um, we're gonna carve this mm -hmm. side of the pumpkin. Then I like to make a rounded opening across the top like that. Okay. And then if you can see, I'm coming back to a teardrop yes. in back. Yes. By the time I've carved that out, I have a wide opening and I haven't interfered with the oh, face. More and surface level on the front for your carving. Yeah, and I don't that's see any reason to carve like tons of notches in here because that's just more difficult to carve right. and more area, okay. surface area for decay. Okay, surface and, uh, area yeah, for decay. As you noticed, that's precisely what I did here. Okay. And it was quite easy. 
Oh. And then there's only one way for it to go on there too, so it's it's just a simple fit. You recommend a tool for the de-seeding. What, what, what are you using besides, I think of a spoon. Do you have mm -hmm. something else that you're using besides yeah, a spoon? Yeah, I mean, I, I suggest getting a serrated spoon. Okay. And I'm sure you've seen these around the stores. Um, and I'll also... Is this different from the one that maybe you get in this type of kit, or can we just grab a kit yeah. from the store? Yeah, I'm I'm not real picky about that. As long as it has a serrated edge and it's a good quality spoon that's not going to crack, which can happen. And then you'll also see I'm using a larger knife to cut out that initial hole, and we have smaller tools for some of the intricate carving. Okay. And you mentioned maybe an egg beater. I've heard a lot about egg beaters. Okay. I have to admit, I'm not sold on it. You're not sold. No. I have seen a couple reels, yeah. TikToks, things yeah. like that. Have you tried it? I have tried it, and I've had mixed results. I'll say that this uh, yellowish pumpkin typically is a little easier to clean out, too, and I think the egg beater would work okay on this one. On the, um, the darker orange pumpkin, I don't know. The guts just are a little more stringy and stuck to the inside more. So don't believe everything you see on right. social media. And plus, don't believe it. You can just see that the size of this pumpkin isn't going to allow for an egg beater to do much good. So you Fair. It might give you a head start. Let's move on to artwork. So tell me, if I'm, if I'm a beginner, where am I starting? Yeah. There are many options available now for the amateur carver to produce a good-looking jack-o'-lantern. Love it. And not everybody feels like jack-o'-lantern is the perfect motif to show off your artistic skills, but anybody can do it. There are endless... Stencils. Yeah, there's all sorts of tools. stencils. I'm sure you've seen these all over the place. They make pumpkin design very easy. And there are a ton of internet sites that have a bunch of pop culture so icons. standard and, kind of poke and carve. That's right, yeah, okay. you take the artwork and you put it over the pumpkin and poke through. And if you don't mind, I'll turn this yes. around now. I'm just getting re getting this one ready oh, with okay. the design in place. Okay, and wow, did I'm, you sketch this prior? I sketched this and... I don't know if I'm believing that you're not an artist, but well, okay. Well, I drew from, <laughs> I, I, I Google things. and Yeah, I come Fair. up with my own designs. Fair. But I search for uh, for images on the internet. So then did you lay this paper across the pumpkin with the poke? That's right. I lay this across and then I poke it with with Let this type of a poker. Yep. And then you can find your holes. And then I always suggest coming back with a marker. Now that you have your little poked holes, mm -hmm. come back with a marker to outline. Now you said something earlier about this pumpkin specifically, the etching. What what does etching bring to the pumpkin? Yeah. Is it hard to do? What's something kind of a beginner point for if we want to get into yeah. the etching? Yeah, I think etching is kind of taking the art to a new level and it opened up a whole new opportunity for me. Mm -hmm. I'll show you on one of my favorite okay. pumpkins. This was a design I drew from a, a children's book that my children loved and I can't even remember the name of the book but it's a snake and you'll see on this photo that I've scraped away the skin about a quarter inch of skin a quarter inch okay that's and a good then marker. it makes a nice smooth fleshy surface and then you can see man when the when the candle is bright inside mm -hmm. it just shines with a beautiful glow and the only part that's all the way cut through is the bright yellow for the eyes and the mouth Speaking on that Speaking of one. candle, you don't recommend a maybe a candle. You want to go more with electronic lights. Well, I, I'm i fine with candles. Mm -hmm. um, I just don't suggest a tea light, okay. which is a very common and inexpensive candle. Okay. But if you use a votive, it produces a higher flame. And I'd say put in two or three votives in there just to give them a show. Give them a show, well, yeah. I'm, I'm ready to pumpkin carve. Yeah. I'm ready, I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna let the mess go, we're gonna have fun. Now, you are, people should know that the festival at Transylvania, it's an outdoor event. It's a family friendly, friendly Halloween for little kids and family. Kind of tell me what that, in, that event looks like this year. Yeah, Festival Transylvania is unique in the haunt industry. We're family friendly, we're very, it's a happy haunted house. We invite kids of all ages to come enjoy it. This year you'll have the opportunity to visit Dracula in his castle, and he's hosting a garage sale. Whoa, love that. And love as a garage part of sale. that garage sale, he's going to send you back in time, and you'll take a fairy tale adventure through Transylvania, meeting your favorite Halloween characters as children. So fun, Chad. Well, I'm ready to take my boys down. We're ready to carve. We're ready. Thank you so much for that. Thank you.